Tis the season for coaching news, and we start out in Bloomington where Indiana has fired Tom Allen after seven seasons. That's been confirmed by 24-7 Sports. Allen 33-49 and overall, including a 3-9 and mark this season. He was the Big Ten Coach of the Year in the COVID-shortened 2020 campaign, but will not be able to play out his time out there with IU. So let's welcome in Brandon Marcello, National College Football Writer for 24-7 Sports. What's your understanding, Brandon, about what exactly went wrong for Tom Allen at IU? Well, simply put, look at the record. The last three years, he has the worst record among Power 5 teams. You know, the big concern there was could they afford the buyout, which is about $20.8 million. The 24-7 Sports heard about a month ago that boosters there and administration were on the same page that if they saw the need to fire him, they are willing to put up that money. They were not going to wait another year for that buyout to drop almost in half when the Big Ten has hit an inflection point here. The college football playoffs are about to expand, but more importantly to them, the Big Ten is expanding and they're getting rid of divisions. Indiana's schedule could potentially be getting easier in the future as they get out of the Big Ten East, so to speak. So they had to make the move right now, they felt like, and they've got some good candidates they believe will be very interested in that job. Okay, so run that list through me because what, how attractive would an Indiana Hoosiers football coaching gig be at the moment? Well, listen, Indiana, despite beliefs, is they've got money. They're a top 15 program as far as revenue. It's just that they don't put a lot of it into football. Now, they're refocusing those efforts to do so. So who would you bring in? Potentially Washington offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb. He's a disciple of Kalen DeBoer, the head coach there, who previously was the OC at Indiana with Michael Penix as his quarterback when Indiana had that great, great season under previous coach Tom Allen. Also consider Kane Womack at South Alabama, the head coach there. He was the defensive coordinator during those successful teams under Tom Allen and a great recruiter. And how about Jason Candle, the head coach at Toledo, has really turned that program into a championship contending one there and is potentially going to win the MAC here in the next week. Some really good names to keep an eye on out there. So just to, to button up this program and situation for Tom Allen, who will have options, will have time to figure everything out. But what's the likelihood Tom Allen will have another head coaching gig at this level or better? Not so good. I do think that he's going to have almost his pick of the litter uh, for coordinator positions himself. He is very well respected in that matter as a play caller. They could potentially jump in that. In fact, I know Indiana believes that they're kind of counting on that to mitigate and offset some of that buyout in the future even if it wouldn't be that substantial. What more can you tell us about Mark Stoops at UK? Got a big win over the weekend. Huge win. And then Texas A&M had been talking to his folks and calling, and it seemed like it was all in play for Mark Stoops to fly to College Station today and take that job and be introduced potentially. But in the 11th hour, things fell apart. A lot of conflicting info about why that happened. Listen, Mark Stoops had been offered that job we can confirm that. Mm. And then all of a sudden, within three hours, Texas A&M and Stoops went apart. A lot of questions out there about this reporting being leaked out to the local media. And then all of a sudden, the fan base turned on it. Why are we firing Jimbo Fisher to go hire a Kentucky coach while having winning records has a losing record in the SEC? A lot of negative feedback. And then suddenly within three hours, Mark Stoops releases a statement. And just before that, you started hearing, hey, this contract hasn't been finalized, folks. There's still some things to be worked out here. In the end, I think it's probably the best thing for both parties that Mark Stoops stays at Kentucky and Texas A&M moves on. And in fact, I think A&M could potentially try and swing big here as they move on in the future. Okay, because that's where I was going to go. Speaking of programs and communities with deep pockets, they certainly have that in College Station. So is it going to be sort of a soft reset with the coaching candidates here? And you mentioned maybe swinging for something big. Yeah, listen, I think that the guy you probably got to go back to is Mike Elko, the head coach at Duke, previously a court defensive coordinator there at Texas A&M. Great recruiter, great solid foundation of what he's able to build. We see it at Duke right now. But if they're going to swing big, the names that are out there, if they want to pull an LSU, like LSU getting Brian Kelly away from Notre Dame a year ago, try to go after Ryan Day at Ohio State. He's feeling some heat despite going pretty much undefeated against the entire Big Ten other than Michigan these last three years. Maybe he'd be willing to move. We don't know, but throw some money at him and all the NIL support. And then also potentially Dabo Sweeney at Clemson. Again, 
a big name coach that needs kind of a change of scenery a little bit. You could tell he's getting a little, I guess, restless there in Clemson as things had necessarily gone the way he wanted to this year, despite winning eight games. And then the name that just makes a lot of sense in the coaching industry and the agents I speak to is UTSA head coach, Jeff Trailer. Not a big name, but he's probably the most well-respected college football coach in the state of Texas. Coach there on the high school ranks. Everybody knows his name. Everybody knows him by face. He wears Texas High School Coaching Association gear everywhere he goes still. He's the crown of the jewel of every big party in the room in that state. I think he would absolutely kill it there in recruiting and also as a coach. But Jeff Trailer interviewed last week for the job. His name didn't pick up as much steam. But again, might be a safe bet to go back to if these other big swings at the plate don't work out. And lastly, before I let you go, how would you describe the Dana Hogerson experience at Houston and where do the Cougs go from here? Listen, it's very difficult for any group of five program to transition to the power of five, especially on short notice, like these new big 12 teams this year. Look at UCF finishing just at 500. Houston struggling the way it did. I think what really didn't help Dana Holgerson at all was in the preseason, pretty much challenging the administration like, well, my buyout's so big, no way you're going to fire me. Well, uh, bet. But we will see what happens there. And Houston has a wealth of resources, billionaire booster there. They are going to be able to go out and get a big time coach. And from my understanding, Houston is going to move quickly here. And one of the top names to watch is one I just mentioned for Texas A&M, Jeff Trailer at UTSA. Strong connections in the state, as I mentioned, on the high school circuit. And that metro area of Houston is a wealth of talent. You can win double digit games there in the Big 12 within the next few years just by recruiting alone. Another name to watch out for, UNLV head coach Barry Odom, the former Missouri head coach, then became a defensive coordinator at Arkansas, very much on the rebound, now playing for a Mountain West Conference Championship as a head coach in year one at UNLV. Brandon Marcello dropping out the very latest there. Certainly appreciate your insight and information here on CBS Sports HQ. Check them out at 24-7 Sports, where, again, some great nuggets about Mark Stoops and Texas A&M, what happened, what didn't happen, what ultimately happened. That's what the guys and girls over there at 24-7 Sports will have you covered. Go check them out and get everything you need, not only in the college sports space, but recruiting and transfer portal updates as well. A lot of college football news on an NFL Sunday. Mark Stoops says he's staying at Kentucky following multiple reports that he had merged as the top candidate for Texas A&M. Stoops confirming his decision on social media, though he did not mention the Aggies. Our colleagues at 24-7 Sports says it's been quite a 24-hour period of things in place. Fan bases apparently revolting. But Texas A&M's coaching search continues as they fired Jimbo Fisher a couple weeks back. Our guy Barrett Silly has been busy this morning. I just checked the timeline quickly here, and, and he has been firing. I don't know if it's the keyboard or the phone, but, you know, Mike Elko, Lance Lepo, uh, all these candidates are good, but Mark Stoops, not okay. Make it make sense. And, Barrett, you know what ending it with that is uh, opening up a can of you know what. Um, let's bring in our Barrett Silly to talk about what just happened here. What are your thoughts about Mark Stoops and, and maybe what took place or what didn't take place or what fan bases were doing in the last 12 to 24 hours, Barrett? Well, it's just embarrassing for Texas A&M because it's almost like they forgot why they fired Jimbo Fisher to begin with. Texas A&M is not a national championship caliber job. It's a developmental job. And Texas A&M fans don't want to hear it, but that's reality. Texas is a national championship caliber job. Oklahoma, Alabama, all these teams that you're going to be fighting with in the SEC moving forward, they are the ones that have the pedigree. Texas A&M needs to be different. It needs to find a coach that can create organizational structure. That's been the biggest problem at Texas A&M. Nobody's on the same page ever. Mark Stoops can do that. You have to get it from the presidential level, the athletic director level, the NIL collective level, all through your coaching staff and the players. Everybody has to buy in. Mark Stoops has done that at Kentucky, a basketball school. Think about that. John Calipari is jealous 
of Mark Stoops because of the success Mark Stoops has had. And I see all this stuff over the last 24 hours. Well, uh, Mark Stoops is an eight-win coach at Kentucky. Yeah, Mark Stoops is an eight-win coach at Kentucky who has multiple double-digit win seasons. If you put him at Texas A&M, with those resources in that recruiting base, he is a consistent 10 win coach. And in the college football playoff era, moving forward, that gets you in contention, if not in the college football playoff every single season. So it's like two weeks ago, Texas A&M realized, you know what? We don't wanna spend all this money on the flashy hire. Let's just go out there and get a ball coach. And then they find a ball coach and he's not good enough for them, even though he's had a ton of success in the same conference. And that tweet, going back to it, yeah, I mean, Jeff Trailer done a great job at UTSA. Lance Leipold done a great job at Kansas. But if Mark Stoops is not good enough, is the guy who sort of rebuilt Kansas or has done pretty good things at Kansas State or brought UTSA into group of five relevance, suddenly those people are okay? It doesn't make sense. And I think Texas A&M needs a cold dose of reality. They are not a national championship caliber product. They have national championship caliber resources, but they need to find a guy that can straight up coach ball and get everybody on the same page. Mark Stoops can do that. He's done it. At Texas A&M, it seems like they've lost what their goal was when they decided to fire Jimbo Fisher. So you think Mark Stoops can be the guy, but he's not going to be the guy then, Barrett. So if we kind of hit a soft reset button then, I know Mike Elko's name's thrown out there as well. Where do you think, or let me rephrase, where should the Aggies go from here, <laughs> in your opinion? Go back to Lexington, call him again, and be like, dude, Mark, are you We're sure? Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, we, we really do want you after all. But no, I mean, I think Jeff Trailer at UTSA, that talk kind of cooled last week, and maybe it's because they did have their sights set on Mark Stoops. So maybe you kick that door again. Now, especially with Houston coming open, maybe Baylor coming open too, Jeff Trailer might be a good fit for there. So you don't want your in-state teams to get the guy that you might have been okay with. So I think you revisit that. I think you certainly go down the Elko Road because he's been there as an assistant coach. And you got to go down Leipold and go go see if Lance Leipold's interesting, uh, interested. But I mean, just to me, if you're not going to hire one of these developmental guys, then you're going to go into the same trap that you did before and try to get Ryan Day or Dabo Sweeney. And okay, maybe those guys work. But it hasn't worked in the past. So I think they're going to have to settle for one of those guys that I listed in that tweet. And look, they're fine. They'll be good. But they're not going to be as good as Mark Stoops would have been. Barry, certainly appreciate it. Uh, haven't caught up with you in quite a while. Love to see you're still in midseason form as we wrap up the regular season <laughs> in college football. Cover three guys will also have you covered. Tom Fornelli, Chip Patterson, Bud Elliott, and Danny Cano. I know Danny also went on social media this morning about Florida State propping up a little video talking about his Seminoles. Scan that QR code as we start to get uh, a little bit closer to the college football playoff, but of course still conference championships still ahead this weekend.